Hi. We've been talking a lot about education today, so I'd like to take just a moment to thank all of the educators out there today. Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> Working in education is hard, and I know because I am a consultant, and I travel to schools around Texas, and I help them adopt new learning technologies and learning practices like project-based learning and design thinking. Um, but it always amazes me when I walk into a school and I see students reading from textbooks that are over 10 years old with blank stares in their faces, knowing that the entire world exists in a device in their pockets. Students are often unengaged and bored with traditional learning styles. And as a bored student myself, I can't help but have empathy for all these kids. I was completely capable of making straight A's as a student. It was just never interesting for me to do so. But I'll never forget. When I was in seventh grade, my science teacher asked me if I would be interested in doing a project. In that project, he asked me to collect and photograph and curate specimens of Texas wildflowers. And at that time, I don't think that I ever cared about wildflowers. It wasn't interesting for me. But after that project, I could identify purple ground clover and western primrose and tell you how they benefited the environment. It was through this hands-on learning experience that showed me this is the way students should be learning. Fast forward to 2013. I opened a pop-up makerspace inside of an art museum in downtown San Antonio. Some of you may not know what a makerspace is. A makerspace is simply a space where you make stuff. <laughs> it's the name implies. But, but seriously, a makerspace is a very unique environment where people can learn to create, fabricate, program, and imagine. You might find high-tech tools like 3D printers and laser cutters, or low-tech tools like sewing needles and hot glue guns. The purpose of Makerspace is to let students and adults explore new skills and, and, and do projects in a hands-on learning environment. It was during this time that I led 10 weeks of summer camp for students from third through eighth grade. Each week, a different group of students came to my Makerspace and we learned how to 3D print jewelry, laser cut cardboard sculptures, solder circuits, design video games, and build robots. It was a crash course in design, fabrication, programming, and creation. Some students came from all kinds of areas. Um, we had students come from a rural town outside of San Antonio to visit the makerspace. We had students of migrant families come and learn about all of these technologies. But no matter what background students came from, one thing was always true. The students were eager to learn they overcame difficult obstacles, and they were left wanting to learn more. Now, I believe that we all have an internal desire to create and make things. We're all makers. Some people make food, others software. Some people make ideas, and some people make self-watering greenhouses for use on Mars. No matter what your interests are, there is a way for you to get involved in making. There's a global cultural revolution happening called the Maker Movement. And it's spurred by maker fairs and maker education programs all over the world. In 2015, over a million people visited a maker fair in the world. In San Antonio, we had our last maker fair last year. And the upcoming one will be twice as big. The Maker Movement wants to put the power of making back into your hands and empower people with the tools and technologies to do so. Imagine, instead of going to the furniture store to buy a new coffee table, making one yourself out of reclaimed shipping pallets. Instead of going to the store and buying a new video game, how about learn to code and make one yourself? But the maker movement is more than just making things, though. It's also about creativity, art, and culture. Taking the maker movement into education is something that I have been working on the past couple of years. And I have helped schools, and libraries and museums adopt maker spaces and maker education programs. One particular school district that I work with has adopted these ideas in their STEM-focused middle school. Every teacher teaches their course through project-based learning, and the students have access to things like 3D printers and sewing machines and soldering irons, and they use those things to make learning come to life. At the end of the year, these students will host a maker fair at their campus and students will show off their projects. Here are a few examples of these projects. These students designed and programmed quadcopters in a week-long summer program. 
They used cameras on the bottom of the quadcopter as it flew into the air to take an aerial survey of their campus. None of these students had any previous experience, and all of them were successful. These students participated in an overnight hackathon, and they designed and programmed a device that sends a tweet when physical mail is placed in your mailbox that says, you've got mail. <laughs> and some of these students have even gone on to work in computer science fields. These girls were in fourth grade, and they designed a custom video game controller that is meant to be used by people with muscular dystrophy. And these are just a few examples of the projects that I help to facilitate in schools. But unfortunately, not all schools understand the power of teaching through projects like this. And they continue to teach based on learning styles from the 1950s. And as I travel to schools, I see that this is even more true in rural areas, in inner city schools, and especially in low income areas. This is why I have chosen to primarily work with schools that have little to no access to technology. One way that I contributed to this was through the Geek Bus. The Geek Bus is a 40-foot recreational vehicle that has been turned into a mobile makerspace. In 2015, the Geek Bus visited over 15,000 students in underserved areas. We took the Geek Bus to schools to teach 3D printing and video game design, computer programming, and robotics. And we heard from the parents and from the teachers and the students, and they said, we want the Geek Bus to be more like our classrooms. They want more of this. But we can't put a Geek Bus in every school. It isn't affordable or scalable into classrooms. This kind of technology is expensive for schools to adopt. I go to schools and I see desktop computers that are over 10 years old. Some schools have almost no technology at all for, for students to use. How can I expect them to be able to design video games and use 3D printers? The cost associated with this kind of tools and technologies can be expensive. However, there is a growing community of makers, engineers, and hackers who are dedicated to democratizing these tools through cheap and affordable open source technologies. One example is the $29 Raspberry Pi computer which is a single board computer about the size of your wallet. And it runs on the open source operating system called Linux. Students can use these Raspberry Pi computers to do their homework. They can learn computer programming. They can watch YouTube videos on it, or they can make a quadcopter with it. The creators of the Raspberry Pi just recently announced a $5 version of their single board computer. And I spent that on coffee this morning. But to be a maker, you don't necessarily need a Raspberry Pi computer or a fancy 3D printer. You can use PVC pipe. You can use cardboard and reclaimed electronics. These are all things that are affordable and accessible for almost anyone to use. And it is my goal to leverage these cheap and affordable open source tools like the Raspberry Pi with schools so that students can use them in a hands-on learning environment through project-based learning. Let's let kids take things apart and make new things and be creative with technologies. Let's empower kids with hand tools and 3D printers and soldering irons. Let them be exploratory. Let's let them solve solutions to problems that we don't even know exist. Imagine a classroom space where students are building rocket prototypes, designing mobile apps, building custom emergency shelters, solving global problems, and just like my seventh grade science teacher, giving me a reason and purpose to learn. Thank you.